Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forge Lines Forever for another 5v5 cast, and it is a Subbar Commander on the map Adaptive Bonaire. And now, before we get into introducing our players with Team 1 on the top left and Team 2 in the bottom right, I'd like to direct your attention to the buttons down below. Subscribe, bell, like, dislike, join, and super thanks, all super helpful ways to help out the channel. Now, without a further ado, let's get into introducing our players, starting with the air player for Team 1, a green Aeon going first air by the name of Okami Easy AI, or actually it's Okami AI Easy. Then we can move on to the southeast with the yellow Cybern going first land by the name of Mosquito, and he is rocking this middle position as we move to the northeast for another Cybern. His name is Magic, or M-A-J-K, I'm gonna call him Magic though, and he has gone first land. And then over even further north of him, we have a green UEF. His name is First One to Die, and we're gonna have to see if he lives up to that name as he's gone first land. Then down to the far south, the last player for Team One, a pink UEF going by the name of Aurora Raven and starting with a first land factory. Now we can move on to Team Two. We have ourselves a red maroon UEF going by the name of I Chizza is what I'm going to call him. I don't know how to pronounce the X or is it Chixa or something like that. And he has gone first land or no, he went first and second air as we move on to the purple Aeon in front of him. And his name is Immortal D. Then to the south of him, we have a red Cybern going first land. His name is, of course, Futter Planet, or Fu Future, Future Planet. I'm going to call him Future Planet. Over even further south, a white Aeon best faction by the name of Matador. He's here to fight some bulls. Then last but not least for the entire game, we have ourselves a brown Cybran going first to land and second land by the name of Catapult. And with all of our players introduced, I need to come over here to options because the sound is sounding a little bit off to me. Let's get these all up to a, a nice number here. There we go. And uh, hopefully, it sounds a little bit better for you. In fact, it's looking even a little bit, a little bit too quiet for my liking. So we're gonna, we're gonna bump it up just a little bit more. Hopefully, in the in the audio edit, it doesn't sound too bad. But want to have you all get these beautiful, beautiful sounds in your ears as we have our early game starting off. Some scouts coming out from I Chizza. He's gonna be trying to get a full scout on the enemy base. Four scouts, very early investment in early vision and a ton of move orders across the map from everybody. Our first few streams of units coming out mainly from Matador getting out some tanks and we have this small tank group now building up over here for Mosquito. Up to the north, the far north, we have a very quick walk expand out from first one to die. And he's built a couple factories here, and he's going to be trying to take over this northeastern corner, as well as Catapult. And the map Adaptive Bonaire, we haven't really talked about it. 25,000 mass spread out across the map. A lot of little choke points and little raises and lowerings in elevation. Gonna be a very interesting map. In fact, I like the look of this map. May even try and play it myself here soon. We have a bit of action popping off over here between some Mantis and some Strikers. And uh, the Strikers win because numbers are strong. Other than that, there's some harassment going on over here from hu this hunter out from, I believe this is, uh, who is this? This is Catapult, and he's managed to pick up a, I believe that was a mech kill, and he's going to get another one. Maybe even managed an engineer there, and he's going to get his first rank of veterancy. Very, very spicy stuff going on. We have our first couple of upgrades coming online now. We have T2 starting up for magic, Catapult starting on gun. These two Cybrans that are very, very similar colors are going to mess with me. They're both kind of brown, although not as bad as whenever you have uh, like two reds up against each other or two greens, then it, then it gets really bad. There's also the yellow and there's another color. I think this yellow and this color are hard to see between each other. And of course, everybody just enjoying their, their time 
on this map. Hunter up to two kills and one rank of veterancy. And over here in the middle, first upgrade that's probably going to finish is this T2 out for magic. We also have T2 on the way for the air player. Interesting, coming out from Okami. Overall, the balance of the game is 91%, so it's a relatively balanced game. Overall, rating range is everywhere from 400 to 900. A true subpar commander, nobody with four digits next to their name. And I'm sure that some players will be sad about that, but it's going to be interesting to watch them duke it out. Kind of like watching toddlers fight with lightsabers. Very much so, a lot of flailing and a lot of effort thrown into it, but not always the most effective. Damage and range now on the way for Aurora Raven. Up to the northeast, we have some strikers going to be enveloped by a lot of Mantis. And this is going to be unfortunate for the first one to die. Gun speed and range about to finish up now for Catapult. The inferior siege engine, we all know trebuchets are better as magic moves forward maybe catapult will build some trebuchets and redeem himself or maybe he'll get shot at by them as magic has t2 finished he's built a pd the good next upgrade that's probably going to finish is this damage and range on the way here for aurora raven t2 also getting close to being done for okami t2 on the way now for mosquito a lot of t2 is coming out onto the field this forward production base i kind of like it our first one to die he's just walked forward and like i'm gonna have factories near the front he is a little bit light on factories compared to his opposition five factories versus three means he's gonna have a little bit of trouble fielding enough units to keep this cybern with a gun upgrade from dealing damage to him he does have a couple of pd here to slow him down he's trying to get t2 at the moment this northern area I feel is going to have a lot of contention very early on here in the center. Seems as though Immortal D trying to put some pressure on to these two Cybern, but both Cybern players either have already gotten or are getting T2. So it's very much so a losing battle at this T1 phase. They just have to build one Cerberus and then it's going to be very, very difficult to press on to these positions. Over here to the northeast, a bit of an engagement between the strikers of First One to Die and the Mantis of Catapult. Catapult going to come very much so out of that happy as he's killed off almost all of the army of First One to Die and he is now making his way into the heartlands of the green UEF. Over here in the center, a bit of a fight breaking out between the Mantis out from Mosquito and the Mantis out from Future Planet. And Future Planet going to have to fall back here T2 has finished up for Mosquito. Damage and range is done for Aurora Raven, who's starting to push forward, taking down a T1 PD. Matador has no upgrades, but does have a decent number of units here. He's probably going to have to fall back, though. The UEF gun comm, particularly dangerous to the Aeon players, as they get to one-shot your tanks now. So it's like having an overcharge with every single shot. Everything dies with just one shot. The Everything from the uh, artillery to the tanks, and it feels real bad. Over here to the east, a bit of a fight breaking out between a raiding group out from Magic. And now we have speed and range on the way for Future Planet. Speed about to finish up now for Immortal D. I would not be surprised to see range afterwards. We have a bit of a fight breaking out over here. We have some triads, which are really making this go a lot better for First One to Die. And First One to Die may even be able to pick up a kill on the Catapult if he has enough. But he's walking into a T1 PD. He needs to be a bit careful. Catapult going to walk away and lick his wounds after taking a massive amount of damage, assumedly via the PD that's been built up over here. In the center, the range now on the way for Immortal D. Gun speed and range finished up for Future Planet. T2 also done for Mosquito, and he's starting to build a bit of a Cerberus creep. Over here to the north, we have some Cerberus being thrown up now by Magic to stop this. And Mosquito is trying to just slowly gain some territory on his red opposition. Right now, it seems as though Matador is having some struggles with this gun comm, but he is holding, at least for the moment. And we can look at overall reclaim numbers. 
right now it seems as though Magic and Okami are the leaders, both above 4,000 or one uh, Magic at 5,000, 4,000 for Okami. Aichiza about to hit 4,000, everybody else at 3,000 or below. Overall economies, Magic and Okami leading the group there as well, followed by Chiza and Matador. Also, Chiza, I know, I know Chiza's in my Discord. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Just let me know, either in the comments or in Discord, if that's right. And that goes for anybody here. Although I think that these names are much easier than the last, uh, the last Casper we did with all of those very complicated names that were not English words. Most of these are indeed English words, even if they are spelled wrong. We have a bit of a fight breaking out up here to the northeast. It does seem as though our... Ooh, there's a bug on my screen. Um, okay, casting through interruptions, I guess. Uh, I, uh, that's a big-ass bug. Okay, um... <laughs> that's, uh, that's not cool. Alright. What's going on? Over here to the north of the, the north, northern side of the map, we have the comm of Immortal D showing up, trying to shut down this firebase out from magic. He does have a bit of an air fight breaking out over here. Seems as though the southern team going to win the air fight. Chizza having more interceptors, although reinforcing interceptors coming out from Okami, and Okami's going to really clean up after this fight. But the interceptors out from Magic are going to be cleaned up as well. And overall, we have some really aggressive pushes coming out from multiple players. Aurora Raven just having a field day, being able to shoot away all of these little units that come forward. 1997 mass killed and almost to his second rank of veterancy. That's one mass short of my birth year. For anybody who wants to feel old, since most of you are much older than me. Immortal D showing up onto the cliff, starting to fire down, but unable to get any lasting damage and doesn't want to stand in Cerberus range for too long, I would imagine. Up here to the northeast, we have a large group of T1 units forming for Catapult, and he may be able to push into the Heartlands once again of his opposition, first one to die. First one to die has Kennels out in the field to help his T1 factories build fa faster. That is an interesting strategy. Love to see it. You love to see these interesting little things that happen in these lower rated games. It's just, you see things that you don't get to see anywhere else in Faf, and it is quite beautiful. Over here to the southeast, a transport out from Chizza. I think it's the first transport we've seen all game. I guess maybe not since, no, you don't need a transport to get there. You do need, need one to get up here though. And it's going to try and expand a bit. We also have a transport filled with engineers coming to the southwestern corner. A lot of transports coming down here for some reason or another. This seems to just be for reclaim. Up to the north, a, that large group of units out from Catapult now starting to make its way to the west. Not really going to get much, going to kill off one T1 max, but the reinforcing units out from the first one to die has really kind of stopped this in its tracks. Shield now on the way, as well as speed and range finished up for Matador, and he's not the only Aeon going for that chunky, beefy Rambo com with the shield upgrade, as Immortal D also working on that very kind of power expensive but if you can run it a very very powerful upgrade for the Yeon com there's a couple of triads set up over here they're fighting off rhinos and hoplites but the triads are going to run into some issues and that is they are just outnumbered by a lot the com of first one to die gonna have to fall back a little bit as hoplites rhinos and mantis clean up those triads here in the middle we have a push coming out from mosquito He's starting to make his way forward. Mosquito, probably the reason why I have this flying bug in my room really bothering me. I do not like bugs unless they are soul rippers. Only kind of bug I can appreciate. Up here to the far northeast, a uh, hoplite and some mantis killed off a mass extractor. And it does seem as though this little force is gonna be cleaned up by these strikers out from first one to die. In the middle, it seems as though Immortal D is showing up to try and help relieve some of this pressure that's being placed upon this forward production base for Future Planet, but that is going to be a lost cause as Gunther's 
going up in the middle, really giving some map control in this central area to the re yellow cyber, the the rello, the yellow cybran, known as mosquito. Shield about to finish. Needs to be careful. Is getting targeted, it would seem, by a Gunther. Needs to finish up that upgrade and probably fall back. Does have some blazes on the field, those very fast assault tanks. Able to use those to really chew through T1 units, although you want to try and keep them at range. They don't have all that much HP. Shield, 99% gun. It is done. He needs to start running away. There's way too many units here for him to handle. That Eversong really not going to help out very much even song and it does seem that we might have our first ejection here on mortal d does have that beefy calm with the shield upgrade but this is a lot of units to have to chew through with a calm is slowly getting the work done there's also some rhinos now showing up this is a bit dangerous we have some reinforcing units showing up now from future planet to try and help his purple ally down here to the southwest it seems that matador is gaining some territory once again and overall, we're reaching a very balanced map state once again. As these units over here to the east are cleaned up. A couple of Jesters showing up, but Immortal D still hasn't lost the shield. Or maybe he has just lost the shield. And he's up to one rank of veterancy as he continues to just fire shots into these units as they retreat. Over here to the far northeast, a fire base being thrown up now by first one to die. Uh, he is throwing up some TMD, but these Vipers going to be an existential threat to this fire base. It's going to be very difficult to hold on to. First one to die, doing relatively admirable for a 400. He's already got a T3 mech. He's, he's just going for the strategy of one mech upgrade at a time. He's doing the uh, RuneScape 199 at a time. He's going 1T3 mechs at a time. It's a challenge. Don't worry about it. Down here to the far southwest, Matador with that shield upgrade really just trying to push and put aggression onto Raven. But Raven has some T2 units on the field. He has some Mongis and Pillars. And they're going to be cleaned up. Of course, now some Obsidians on the field of for Matador. So he will be happy enough to fight that fight. Over here in the center, a bunch of interceptors dying to blazes. Very unfortunate. Landed planes. The cyber processing units not quite able to tell what they should do. I guess they will just take it. As T3 air has been achieved by Chizza, has T3 air been achieved by our green Aeon? It has. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the economies once more. 91 mass a second for Okami. Chizza at 94. 83 for Matador. Magic at 88. Aurora Raven at 68. And everybody else below 50. So as of the moment, Team 1 quite ahead economically. They have about 30 to 40 mass a second over their opposition. Gonna have to see if that results in anything major going on here soon also i know that it hasn't been relevant but i want to point out that this is not full share it is share until death so players need to be very very careful with their comms mosquito walking forward he's still just pd creeping firebase creeping towards future planet future planet has just said fuck it i'm gonna stand in my base stay in my base he's not bothering He's getting a T3 mechs upgrade, although it's the only mechs in his core base that hasn't gotten uh, mass storage, which is an interesting call there. Some blazes here in the center trying to put some pressure onto Team 1. Immortal D trying to be as aggressive as possible. Unfortunately, his opposition just built a bunch of Cerberus, and that's just going to slow him down. Jester's even showing up as a bit of base defense here. And it does seem like the... Blazes are going to be able to get some damage done here. There's a T2 mechs that's most likely going to die. As there's really nothing in the area to deal with this. I guess this Rhino now showing up is kind of a problem. A Gunther battery is firing on a Mortal D. His shield... Oh, Mosquito got killed off by Matador! Oh, I look away for a second. I don't even know how he died. Attack missile battery, or attack missile baby. 
where is the TAC missile? It says he was killed off by Matador, but where's the tactical missile that did it? It's... No, there's... It wasn't a tactical missile, was it? It was Mercy's! Oh, it was totally Mercy's. Alright, well, I missed it. And as we were talking about, it is indeed share until death. So, Matador going to be in trouble. I was too distracted by Immortal D going very low on HP. He now has some gunships out, but they're going to be shot down relatively quickly. Over here to the far southwest corner. T3 land. This is the first T3 land I've seen on the field out from Matador. He is doing the Aeon Proud, building Harbingers. And up to the northeast, it seems first to die is having struggles with the Mass Viper battery. These Viper is going to be very difficult to deal with as over here to the southeast, there's a bunch of broadswords now onto the comm of Aurora Raven. And Aurora Raven going to be going down almost assuredly. There's nothing in the area to stop this. There's not really any ASF over here for Okami Easy. And Okami... Oh, the shield going to maybe save Aurora Raven for a few seconds but it doesn't seem like there's nearly enough to save him. And with that, Team 1, who I was talking about being ahead economically, has just plummeted in Eco and lost so much territory to the air aggression coming out from Team 2. Both Matador and Chizza getting some great plays there between the Broadswords, the Swift... Ooh, even has Swift Winds to help with the air effort. And that Mercy Snipe, because I can't imagine it was anything but a Mercy. There is no TAC missiles built here. And that is going to be brutal. Harbinger's over here helping out the units of Future Planet. These Restorers, which are now starting to be built very, very quickly. A bit of a Restorer ball going to be built up very soon. And it's now a 3v5. Team 1 desperately needs to get some kind of aggression down. Needs to take out one or two of these players. Because right now it's looking dire. The Restorer is going to be chased down by Swift Winds and ASF. They are going to take a few with them. Although, not nearly enough to make it matter. The base of magic now under threat by this T1 Force, although I'm sure he can just build some Cerberus very quickly and deal with this. T1 units quite obsolete at this stage of the game. Over here to the far east, Hoplites, Vipers, and Rhinos out from Catapult making huge inroads against the base of first one to die. He's going to get damage and range on the comm, but I don't see how he survives this. These units getting into the base, they kill off the shield. Are they going to be able to get any sustained damage down onto magic? It does not seem so. As first one to die's base is just being ripped apart and dismantled piece by piece, bit by bit as Magic pushes into the green UEF base. Mongeese being built as a last ditch effort to try and defend. He's also going to try and use the gun T2 comm to push forward. Down here to the southeast or southwest we have a Harbinger and shield comm push showing up now for Matador. Would be a great idea to throw down a T1 factory and just get this reclaim. There's so much reclaim in this base. 25,000 as much as we had at the beginning of this match on the entire map in just this one small area. And right now, it just seems as though Team 1 has fallen apart. They just don't have the answers to the questions being proposed by Team 2. Those two airplays, massive, leaving this huge power vacuum in the middle of the map. It seems as though Okami Easy AI is going to... I don't know why Okami AI Easy is going to show up here and try to re-expand into his allies base but he needs to address this force down here on the southern side of his base as over here to the east it seems a bunch of even songs now pushing against the forward fire bases of magic spider now on the way for magic does he have the economy for it he has a hundred mass a second if he's not building anything else he may be able to afford that a bunch of restorers coming down here to the southeast or southwest. Why do I keep on messing up east and west this game? To the to the bottom left of the base. Uh, gonna kill off those flax first and foremost. Foremost, and Matador may be under threat here if he just targets the comm. 
It's almost assured that this is going to be a death for Matador. The Restorer is winning the air fight as well as the Sam here. And he may just be able to come in and kill off this white comm. As over here to the east, first one to die has just walked into the base of Catapult. And he has died for it. Catapult, probably not so happy to lose all of his forces. Although over here, he's making huge inroads. And the Restorer is going to slowly clean this up. He has so many Restorers here. I'm very surprised he didn't go for the kill. I'm sure he can see the comm there. Yes, he's maybe a bit worried about AA being built, but he won the air fight and he won it handily. That's a lot of mercies now being built up here as well. Although that T1AA will have something to say about the mercies. The Monkey Lord passed 50% complete and rising rapidly up to 56, 57%. Over here, a bunch of renegades now being used to try and Shoot down this attacking land force out from Catapult. And the Restorer is now onto the combo Matador and his health is dropping like a rock. And that's going to be our first ejection for Team 2 and a desperately needed win for Team 1. That's going to really leave a lot of area down here. It was Matador putting on a lot of pressure towards Okami AI Easy. And he had the lion's share of units. He was the one producing T3 units for his team. T3, I'm sure, has been finished up for other players. Actually, no, it hasn't. Uh, team, there, there is the only T3 on the map for Team 2 is this air factory out from Chizza. So that may be something huge. A lot of mercies built up here, and these can be very useful for both aggression if a comma overextends, or can just be used to help deal with base defense. Have we seen experimental walking through here at any time soon? And a lot of units now mustering here in the center of the map for team two, but there's a monkey Lord finished up and that monkey Lord's going to be very, very dangerous. And it's now starting to look like Okami and magic may have this with that monkey Lord on the field. It seems like there's very little to stand in the way of it other than maybe air forces, but the restorers have proven remarkably useful in these air fights, winning them quite handily. You need so many ASF to fight restorers, but of course restorers cost so much more than their ASF counterpart. And these, ooh, we have a mercy snipe incoming. Oh, but the mercies are gonna be, get clipped by the flak. And as Mercy's going to go down, unfortunate. If he could have gotten the snipe onto Catapult, this would have been a much more desperate situation for Team 2. They would have been very quickly knocked down a huge peg. The Restorer is still dangerous. You can maybe even just use the Restorers to get in here and kill off the comm. There's not enough air units here to really threaten this Restorer ball. There's, more, there's just as many, if not more, Restorers on the field. And Restorers have more HP. They all take multiple passes, although, although a lot of these are bruised and battered. Maybe just playing it cautiously to make sure he doesn't lose the ball, the cloud. You have to keep the Restorer cloud very, very much so healthy. Got to keep a lot of it. Indeed, coming out from Future Planet makes Sam's indeed. Indubitably. Build those Sam's. As now some Restorers going to start being produced by... Oh, uh, by Immortal D as the Restorers for Okami show up here. They're going to start focusing down these Flax. They're also going to kill off the ASF. They may even be able to get some veterancy by killing off the ASF. And it doesn't seem like they have the staying power, or maybe they do, to take down this comm. At this point, it may just be worth it to focus on the comm, trying to take out all of the AA didn't work for him and he lost all of his restorers it would have been 100% better to just go for the comm I think you get the kill he does win air there at least temporarily uh, does Chizza and this monkey lord seems as though pathing is a bit of an issue needs to get inside this base catapult gonna start running away Monkey Lord now going to start getting fired on by restorers and a ton of Stinger gunships 
now pouring out of the base of Chizza or Chixa. I don't know how to say your name. I, an X in the middle of a word it does not make sense. As uh, Monkey Lord pressing into the base of Catapult. Catapult kind of being bullied at the moment. Both players of Team 1 throwing a lot of resources into taking him down. He's going to lose his base, but his comm is going to be able to walk away, which is very important since he's a Cybern comm. Always have that option for Telemazer. As the gunships show up, the Monkey Lord going to quickly fall as this is a painful situation. A bunch of renegades showing up for magic, going to try and shoot down the gunships since gunships can shoot at each other. But this Monkey Lord almost assuredly going down. Stingers are so much fun to watch. The Monkey Lord did achieve a pretty substantial victory though. Able to shut down one of the largest land producers of Team 2. And Team 1's looking stronger and stronger. Another Monkey Lord on the way for magic. A large land force now built up for magic. Needs to be careful though, now that there are restorers on the field for the opposition and all these gunships. Mass restorer just seems to be the plan for Okami. And it is seeming to work out for him in the air so far. Although needs to be a bit careful with a bunch of stingers coming onto the field. They may be even better than ASF at dealing with the restorers. With that large DPS they do hold. Maybe even just go for broadswords if it's going to be a... If it's going to end up being Restorers versus Broadswords, Broadswords win because they get to shoot the Restorers with that massive DPS. At least I believe so. I mean, I guess maybe not since the Restorers get to fire both of their weapons. Somebody in the comments let me know who wins Restorers versus Broadswords. As these Stingers continue to clean up all of these T1 units pouring out from the base of Magix. It feels like there's enough restorers to make something happen. Although, oh, at the same time, it feels like you might want to just save up some more. Nuke spotted as a nuke is building for I Chizza. Is that the only nuke? Yeah, that seems to be the only nuke. Maybe this killed off? No, there's no way this killed off. I'm still upset that I missed Mosquito's death, but there is a tactical missile launcher here. Okami expanding into the base of his ally and still building a lot of restorers. I think that Team 1 needs to come up with a with a more solid strategy. They both have strong economies, although overall very far behind Team 2 economically now. 213 mass a second, the highest economy in the game for Okami. 141 for Magic is nothing to scoff at, but 219 now as Chizza surpasses Okami. And Immortal at 144 and 128 for Future Planet. These players all sitting on substantial ecos except for Catapult. Everybody is in the range where if they want to, they can build an experimental. As that is a RAS SCU factory with mass fabricators used to, uh, to lower the cost, which is interesting. Let's go ahead and look at reclaim. 39,000 for Immortal D. It's been doing very good on the reclaim. Magic at 26,000, 20,000 for Okami. Catapult at 11,000. Chiz at 8,000. And only 3,000 for Future Planet, who has more than enough reclaim in his area. Just needs to start taking it. And Immortal D is starting to eco very hard. He's starting to expand into the former base of Matador, who was doing very well earlier. Strat Bomber is now on the field for Okami. I guess maybe he's going to go for just the Snipe. The Patron SMD about to be finished up for Okami. Needs to be a bit careful. This nuke is building very quickly. Needs some assistant on, assistance on that patron. It's 
speaking of patrons and speaking of other things, if you've watched this far into the video and you are not subscribed, shame on you! Hit the red button below, it's free and it helps out the channel very much so. Also, something that's not free but helps out the channel even more, Patreon and channel memberships. There's a join button down below and there's a link to my Patreon in the description. It makes this channel so much easier to do. It really helps me out. So uh, yeah, that's, that's my shilling out of the way. Also, you can super things. I haven't had one of those yet. I seriously wonder how it works, but at the same time, I'm not about to super things on my own video because I don't want to lose money. As a uh, monkey lord out from magic being used as kind of just a way to hold this choke point. Magic trying to re-expand into this area to the north. GC now on the way for a mortal D and that is building quite quickly as we're just past 50%. 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. That's going to be done within a minute. It's going up so, so quickly. And that's going to be a real problem for Team 1. I only really have, I guess, the Restorer Cloud and the Monkey Lord. Although with multiple players now in air for Team 1, we now have ASF starting to be produced for Magic. It's just Chizza making air as of the moment, other than a couple of Restorers getting kicked out of the base of Immortal D. Maybe the Restorers will be enough. How many are we sitting on? 24 and raising, and these Restorers are almost all, if not all, full health. And Mosquito hanging up here, letting everybody know that there's an attack coming from Magic. The GC is done. The nuke almost finished, about to launch. Oh no! The patron is nowhere near loaded. This could be devastating. We have a snipe attempt though. On the cards down here to the south, that's a lot of strat bombers. Although the nuke, probably firing momentarily. Once Chizza realizes that's loaded, he's gonna fire it, I'm sure. The strap bombers down here to the southeast or southwest. I keep on doing that. Why? What's wrong with me? Normally, that's something I'm good about. The southwest for Okami gonna be very difficult to counter. There's just not much in the way to deal with this. In fact, we could see multiple players get ejected if these restorers go for the calm of Future Planet and the strats go for the calm of Chizza. That could just spell the end of this game for Team 2. The restorers slowly starting to move in. I guess that's a lot of flack, but you can very quickly deal with that. Restorer is going to be used to try and kill off all of these... ASF as the strat bombers come in the ASF need to respond the ASF need to take down the strat bombers But it's too late and the nuke will it fire in time? Chizza getting strat bomb does he fires the nuke Oh my word is it gonna is it gonna land it's going for the base of magic Okami is gonna walk away magic doesn't have an anti nuke himself the restorers have been cleaned up but air supremacy now in the hands of Team 1. Every second that goes by, Team 1 is now going to get a huge advantage if they can just continue to produce restorers. They'll be in a very strong position, but they're going to lose a base with a 30% disruptor. And that's going to hurt really bad. Magic going to be crippled. He does have a Monkey Lord still kicking around, but this GC now on the front starting to cause issue. Magic needs to be careful with his calm. As the GC pushes forward. Mercy is coming out in waves to try and kill the GC. They're going to kill it very quickly. It's a lot of DPS when you're spamming out mercies like this. The question is, can the GC get any more damage done for Team 1 or for Team 2? As this Monkey Lord's cleaning out this attack out from... Catapult. Immortal D probably has another GC. Yeah, he's already finished another GC, so even if you kill this one, 
another one on the horizon, but with full air control, you can just continue to throw mercies at this. I guess it only takes one flak to stop this, though, for a mortal D. The GC down to 45,000 HP and falling. The Monkey Lord about to be within range of this GC. Monkey Lord could really help. Okami trying to build up enough point defense to help out here. As well as the Mercies. The point defense go down. Magic is building an SMD. He just needs to walk away. Magic, just walk away, man. No, Magic's getting shot at. Oh, no. And the GC is going to pick up the comm of Magic, who is just... I mean, he didn't have much left, but he had a Monkey Lord. And that could have been pivotal. The GC going to go down. And that is going to be brutal. The Monkey Lord gone. And we haven't talked about him much, but if there is a time to talk about Future Planet, it's now showing up with a massive wave of Loyalists. Although this Oblivion Point Defense uh, battery making a strong argument for why he shouldn't push. And now there's a GC, there's some units out from Catapult and this large Loyalist army out from Future Planet. A bunch of mercies being built up. Although, at this point, it's gonna be a lot harder with Flak showing up from Catapult. A mercy's gonna go in for that second GC. Is there gonna be a Flak in range to stop this? Oh, it doesn't seem as though that's the case. The GC immediately taken down to half HP. More Mercy is pushing forward, but Flak is starting to get closer and closer to the GC. More PD being thrown up. If he can hold here, maybe he can make something happen. It's a hard game to win, but it's not necessarily impossible for Okami. But right now, it's looking vi very desperate as a Mortal D pushing in with the GC and the Loyalists. The Monkey Lord would have been invaluable at this point to help hold this off. And the massive array of Oblivions not quite able to kill this off in time. It's going to kill off the GC. The Loyalists are slowly going to start being picked apart by these Obsidians, or Oblivions. Shield on the way for Okami. He's just trying to... He's trying to get any kind of HP he can. That shield upgrade going very quickly with T3 finished. He's going to lose a lot of power very soon, though. He does get shield. It does save his HP for a little bit. But in the end, Okami, easy AI, or AI easy, going to go down. Thank you all for watching. You've been beautiful. Thank you to the Patreons. Thank you to the channel members. You all are beautiful. Consider joining the Patreon with the link down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Uh, consider joining the channel membership if you want access to emotes and a badge next to your name on every, on every time you comment. You all are beautiful. See you in the next one. Uh, bye bye I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love. The fake is if you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, although it's your mother. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fake.